everyone, Beesman coming at you today, and I decided to make a quick little video tutorial on how you implement a field of view limiter, which basically helps to alleviate motion sickness when you artificially move a player, like on this roller coaster. And as you can see here, I'm basically shrinking the field of view as we increase the velocity. And this is in response to a paper that came out a few weeks ago, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But basically what they did was, as they moved a player with the trackpad, you would basically shrink the field of view. And I think this is something really important to try. So I'll also put a link in the description to where you can download this, which is going to be up from our blog post on FuseVR.com. And you can try this out for the Vive, which we're going to be developing with, as well as the CV1 and DK2, because we're using SteamVR. And at the end of this video, I'll also show you how it works with the DK2. But basically, when you try this out, you have the field of view limiter. It'll look a lot different from what you're seeing on the display. And you can enable or disable it by pressing any key on your keyboard. So that disables it right there. And it'll also work with Google Cardboard if you follow along with the project and then just tweak a little bit of the settings. But other than that, let me show you where you can get this roller coaster so that we can get started with this tutorial. And I hope you follow along because it's pretty easy to do, actually. So let's just get started. So... To get started, you'll need to go to Andrew Nakas' Roller Coaster Simulator page, and I'll put a link to that in the description, as well as a link to his YouTube channel, so you can check out a bunch of his cool 360 videos. And just to get started here, we're going to make sure to hit this download button, download the zip, and once you have the zip, go ahead and unzip it. And I already have that here, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up, actually no, first, before I open up Unity, the one thing you're going to need to do is find find where you unzipped it and actually delete everything except the assets folder there's like a this small little bug with the beta right now where if you're importing in something that's prior to like 5.0 which this project is a lot of the settings cause unity to crash so we want to avoid that so i'm just going to go ahead and delete that so that we get it kind of fresh and once you do that go ahead and open up 5.4 unity's beta and the reason I'm using the 5.4 beta for this specific project is because I want to use SteamVR's native support, which will come really handy if you want to support the CV1 or the Vive. So I think that's really cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that folder with just the assets in there now. And it's going to go ahead and upgrade the project, basically. It'll notice like some of the API calls are a little old, so it wants to go ahead and upgrade them. So we're going to let it do that. And I will see you in a bit as soon as this is done upgrading. Awesome. So now that we have the project upgraded and into 5.4, we're going to actually go ahead and go to the Assets folder. And we're going to go and jump into Roller Coaster 3's Unity scene. And so if you open that up, you'll see that the Skybox is kind of broken. And so we can fix that by going to Standard Assets, Skyboxes. And this particular scene uses the Sunny 1 Skybox. So we're going to go and hit all of the fix nows for that. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is just to upgrade these textures. I kind of wish Unity would automatically do that, but oh well. So just moving around the scene. So the way this works is that it's just a roller coaster with a pre-planned path. And it's using a little spline math to basically plan that path. And you can kind of see it here if you're looking at the red line. That just basically follows the roller coaster, and that's just the, the planned path. And so all of the code for this is primarily driven by this cart 3 object. So if we kind of zoom into this, and you can see that there are two cameras here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open this up and get it to work with our CV1 or Vive. And to do that, we're actually going to disable the dive camera. So this is actually a Google Cardboard camera, so we're going to and disable that and then go to this main camera and then just get rid of this gyro script so once we do that we can go to build settings and we'll just add this scene to it by hitting add open scenes then go to player settings and and it build the virtual reality supported it'll default to the oculus sdk but we actually want to use the open vr sdk so just add open vr and then remove oculus with these plus and minus buttons and once we do that, I'm just going to move this out of the way, and we can hit play. And there we have it. We can put on our headset, and 
we are in a roller coaster and everything's working with VR. So there we have it. And so now I'll just stop that. The way that we actually want to add our field of view limiter is by actually going to assets, import package, effects. So this will take a little bit of time, but you're going to want to import this. So again, I'm going to cut while this imports in. Sweet. So now that we have our standard assets imported, we can go to standard assets, effects, image effects, scripts. And if we scroll down here to vignette and chromatic aberration, that's the script we're going to want to use. So let's just click on our camera to bring that up in the inspector. And we can drag that into our camera. And we can just play around with it. The thing that we're going to be playing around with the most is this vignetting property. And I'm just drag it around. And as you can see, this is pretty much the effect that we need for the field of view limiter. It's as we get faster and faster, we just need to bring this down to be nice and small. And if we don't really move around that much, then we don't need any vignetting. But we don't really need any chromatic operations. So I'm going to set that to zero. And that's pretty much it. And the neat part about using the native Unity VR support is that it makes it really simple to just use the main camera that's in there already and then just apply this and it just works in VR. So that's pretty neat. So the next thing that we want to do is actually go ahead and create a very simple script to actually control our vignette and as we basically move around in our scene. So I'm just going to go here, create script. C sharp script and call this faux limiter. And we're going to double click that, open that up into Visual Studios. And so once we do that, we have our standard C sharp template, which is the start and update. And so we're going to first start off by writing code to calculate our velocity. So for that, what I'm going to do is create a private variable that is a vector 3, and that's just going to represent our old position. I'm just going to call it old pause. And the reason I'm saving an old position is, if you remember from physics, velocity equals distance divided by time. And the distance is basically how much we've moved from the current frame since the previous frame. So we just have to keep track of the previous frame's position. And so in start, what I'm going to do is just save our previous frame and that's basically just to initialize things and that's just the transform.position is the way you get the position and update is our method that's called every single frame that we draw to our VR headset so for that what I'm going to do is say for velocity equals our transform.position so that's the current position minus the old position that we saved and divide that by time dot delta time and so that's the time that it took to get from the old position to the current position. So that's it for the velocity. So super simple. And just to make sure that we're keeping our data fresh, we need to set that old position to transform dot position. And that's it for velocity. So now we have access to our velocity super easily. And then the next step is to basically make sure that we have our vignette set. And for that, what I'm going to do is basically when, when we're playing around with the vignette, one thing you have to make sure doesn't happen is you don't cross past a certain value. So between 0.6 and 0.7, those are kind of extreme values, but, and they really show off in the display, but and they don't feel too bad in the headset. But like you just kind of want to make sure it stays at most at 0.7, because anything like this, the field of view is too small, and at 1, you don't see anything, and that kind of defeats the purpose of everything. So we got to make sure that we stay at, at most 0.7. And to do that, we need to tie that to a specific velocity that if we ever cross, get to that velocity or cross it, then we need to cap it at that max field of view limit. Hopefully that makes sense. And so I'm just going to jump into field of view, and we need to just create two variables. I'm going to make them public so we can edit them in Unity in and of itself without having to go back to the script. And there are going to be two floats, which is just floating point values, and we're going to call them max speed. And I'm going to set this to 6f because that is basically the velocity that 
the paper uses for their movement. And again, we can change that to match our roller coaster, but that's the reason I'm using six there. And then we're going to set another one for max fove. And this one I'm going to set to 0.7f. So with those two in place, those values are what we're going to be using to attach and change our vignette. The other thing that we need to add is basically a, and actually I'm not going to, we need to create the namespace first. And that's using Unity standard assets image effects. So if you remember, that's the exact package we imported. We just have to tell the script that we're using that. And that'll allow us to get our vignette. And let's just call that the faux limiter. OK, so now that we have our variables in place, in start, what we're going to do is actually get access to that script we attached to the camera. So we just call get component. And we type in here the vignette. And there you go. So that'll, that'll get us that access. And then the next thing we have to do is actually, basically what we need to do is given the current velocity, we need to calculate what we ideally would like the fov limiter to be. And then we check and see what our current fov limiter is. And then we incrementally move towards that expected value. And the reason we do that as opposed to just kind of setting it uh, based on what exactly the velocity is, is so that we get a nice easing and out effect. And if we don't do that, then what ends up happening is you basically, it'll be really flashing as far as, because your velocity will be changing a lot, so it'll be flashing a lot, and it, it just isn't a very comfortable experience. So that easing and out really helps. So for that, what we're going to do is create a float, call it expected limit. I'm going to set this to the max field of view, that 0.7. And then we're going to add a quick check to make sure that our velocity is less than our max speed. And if it is, then we're going to apply this calculation of basically saying that uh, we want to check our velocity and get a ratio of that to the max speed and then multiply that by the max field of view. So basically what this line is saying is we're just getting a proportion of our max field of view based on the velocity because we haven't hit that max speed yet. If we have, then we need to cap it at 0.7 or whatever our max field of view is. And then the last thing we have to do after that is basically get a interpolation. So we can set that in the field of view limiter dot intensity. So that's our way of getting that big netting property. And what we're going to do is say map f dot lerp. So lerp is that value that says basically we're going to get some value in between two values we provide it. So the values we're going to be providing it are basically both limiter dot intensity. So that's the current value. And then the second value is going to be this expected limit. And then we have to provide it a rate. And this is the part you can probably get the most fancy with, is basically how you define that rate. And the paper goes into a few details on how to do that. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just basically going to set it to 0.1f. And in the script that I'll provide on FuseVR.com, I add a small little update to that that kind of matches what the paper does. But again, nothing terribly fancy. So that's pretty much it. So now that we have that script written, we can go back to Unity and just kind of drag that onto, oops, drag that onto the camera. I'm going to set the max speed to be 25 because that is about what the what the roller coaster average was when I was playing around with it. But I'm just going to also bring this vignetting down to zero. And at this point, we can test it out. So as you can see already in the inspector, we are getting the vignetting property set to uh, 0.3 almost. And that's just based on what our current speed is. And you'll see again that that field of view gets limited. So now I'm in this roller coaster. It doesn't feel nearly as bad as when you don't have the field of view limiters on. It still kind of feels weird because obviously the parameters aren't set up correctly. Um, you can obviously make the field of view a lot smaller and make that a lot more comfortable. That, of course, like plays around a little bit with how much presence you get, but now it's pretty much dynamically doing it. 
and we didn't add a lot of code. It's pretty self-explanatory. And yeah, and let me let me now cut out here and switch to showing you guys in the DK2. All right, so I'm back with the DK2, and this is just primarily to show that the same code is going to work with both the Vive as well as CV1. So the only thing I did between now and that last cut was I plugged in my DK2 and I restarted Unity and found that I had Oculus Home already. And so yeah, basically as you can see here, I have the head rotation, everything's working, big netting's working, and yeah, it's pretty seamless. There's the there you can actually see the field of view limiter in effect. And yeah, I can see it a little bit off to the sides in the, the headset. But I highly recommend you check it out and either that be by building the project yourself and playing around with it or you can check out that executable that's also on that blog post. But uh, yeah, hopefully this was useful and let me know if you run into any issues. Um, I definitely ran into a couple in trying to build this even though it's super simple. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's been Fuseman and I'm signing out something from this video if you did don't forget to hit that like button and if you want to see more content like this make sure to subscribe or follow us on social media want to see some past tutorials click the box on the left for last week's live stream and the box on the right to learn how to implement valve's lab render